found out when I left school and also left home the same day. I couldn't stop school and, and stay at home. It was never going to fly with my parents, at least not with my father for sure. And uh, I, I also felt that if I was going to start my own business, I, I really want to give it every opportunity. So, so really, at that stage, I guess I was just turning 15, um, I went ahead and, and looked in the neighborhood. I said, look, you know, I'm, I'm going to just take a chance. So I found uh, a one-and-a-half room apartment actually five blocks away from my parents' house. I didn't want to move too far, you know. I said, oh my God, what am I going to do? I'm, I'm like 15 years old. I mean, how am I going to take care of myself? Um, but uh, I found this one and a half room apartment on the carry. I was on my own. And, and at that point, I started contacting people uh, to offer my services as a dish jockey because that was my source of revenue at that point. I was always confident. I never had any belief that this wasn't going to happen. There wasn't a lot of disc jockeys then. I, I may have been even the first disc jockey. People were booking bands and you know they were saying, well, what, what are you, if you're a radio announcer, what are you going to do at a party? And I said, no, no, I'm not a radio announcer. I'm a mobile disc jockey. You know, that's the term that I coined. I made cards at that point and, and was able to, to work quite regularly. Way back then there was something in Verdun called the Dawson Youth Club. Uh, I did that. I said I did the the YMHA, the YMCA. Uh, I contacted some uh, high schools and and started doing like you know uh, sock hops at high schools. So basically, I was a, a one person operator. I was strictly me, the disc jockey, making myself available. Uh, I'd call someone if it was a Christmas party and uh, it was on a Saturday night and I was booked already. I said, well, look, you know, book me on the Friday and I'll give you 25% off. You know, I, I really had to hustle to get the work because, you know, this was my only source of revenue, of course. At one point, you know, I was getting a lot of gigs and I found another person and I said, you know, uh, would you like to do some parties for me? And he said, sure. So I got more equipment, had a second person out there, had one price for me and a price for a second dish jockey from uh, my company, which at that time was called Superior Sound. Very quickly, you know, I, I had the two systems booked, and not too long after that, one to a third. So all of a sudden, I'm thinking, wait a second, you know, this is coming together because, you know, we're now charging, you know, $125 a night, and and I'm getting, you know, 125 for each of the two guys, and 175 for me, and uh, my expenses were not that high. So uh, it sort of was now coming together. You know, maybe I was around, you know, maybe just just getting, you know. Seven, you know, 16, 17, when the, the DJ gig started to, to multiply, because I was really a, a forerunner, and, and, you know, people were saying, well, this is great music, let's call this guy, and quite regularly, you know, we were turning down bookings, but I didn't want to expand too much, because the more systems you had on the road, there was more chance that something could go wrong, and, and it was really very important then, just like it is now, to make sure that my customers are happy. People started then to call you know, for, uh, you know, we're getting married, do you have uh, classical musicians? And uh, no, but let me call you back. And then I call the Musicians Guild and I say, uh, you know, what kind of classical musicians are available in Montreal? They said, well, there, you know, there's harp, there's violin, there's flute. So I got the name of these musicians and then started to set up associations with musicians where I started booking musicians for ceremony and getting a commission from them then eventually got into booking top 40 bands. Mid to late 60s, I probably had 20 bands that I booked. So it was now turned into a full-fledged booking agency. We were booking tons of high schools, you know, and, and uh, there would be a high school committee, and I would meet the people and get to know them and become friends with them, and, and I may have got four, five, six, seven high school bookings from each of these high schools. So it was really a lot of coordination. I, I then hired a lady to work for me, uh, her name was Leslie Rust. She was the first person that worked for myself way back in the 60s. And she was a really excellent with business. And she was the one that coordinated everything because the paperwork was getting big time. And, and at that stage, you know, we didn't have a computer. It was all done, you know, hard copy on contracts and carbon paper. But any given weekend could be, uh, you know, could easily be 15 bookings. So it was really... Uh, uh, massive coordination, but word was starting to spread that, that, you know, Sheldon Kagan is now able to provide all your entertainment needs. I had a great time at that, but, but I think I probably worked 
much harder than most people at that stage in their life.